H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. So, coming back to Selenium IDE, so let us speak something about the Selenium IDE tool. Now, Selenium IDE is, or as we have seen, it's a record and playback tool which can only be installed as an add-on of Firefox browser. So, this becomes a huge, huge drawback. That means I cannot configure Selenium IDE over any other browsers. And that precisely means that I cannot record and playback any transactions in any other browsers. So, I have to only record and playback my transactions through Firefox browser because Selenium ID only gets installed in Firefox browser. Next is whatever recording do we do that record the recording is actually converted to Selenius commands. So that means the script that we see in Selenium ID is nothing but a set of Selenius commands. Now as, I, as we have seen that recording and playback of these transactions or these scripts or these Selenius command based scripts can only happen in Firefox browser and I have told again uh, earlier also that it basically becomes a major drawback. Okay, so let's see what are the other kind of you know negative aspects of Selenium IDE. The neg next negative aspect is parameterization. Now parameterization is a process in which we actually test the same functionality of the application with different data sets. Now for example, we have a username and password in a login screen of a Gmail app. Now we want to basically test the same login procedure with 10 different username and passwords. Now if you want to do the same thing, we want to do the same stuff with your automation tool, we have need to do parameterization. So parameterization is a process in which a particular functionality of an application is tested with different data sets. Now conducting parameterization in Selenium ID is a pain. We need to use third party extensions to do parameterization through Selenium ID. And if God forbid the party, the third party extension stops working because of technology changes, we are stuck with it. So that's another, you know, negativity or a drawback as far as using Selenium ID is concerned. The next thing is the management of test suits. Now there are hundreds and hundreds of test suits which are available in a particular automation project. Now each suit will have hundreds and hundreds of test cases. Now we call test suits is nothing but a collection of test cases. That, that, that's what it means. So if you want to manage our test suits, if you want to actually prioritize our test suits, if you want to prioritize our test cases, if you want to make dependency out of our test cases present in the test suit, it is impossible to do these kind of you know, stuff using Selenium ID. So that is why management of test suit is quite impossible with Selenium ID. So that comes as a major you know, drawback of using Selenium ID as a whole. <coughs> the next thing is about the generation of test reports. Report generation in Selenium ID is also next to impossible. There are certain extensions available, third party extensions, but this third party extension does not work properly. So you creating reports required by managers or creating reports required by technical guys uh, becomes a, a, a difficulty using Selenium ID as a tool. Now, before I move and jump towards Selenium RC, let me speak about Selenium ID. Now, Selenium ID is still used in the market and it is part of Selenium 2.0 web version, which came after Selenium 1.0. It is still present as part of your Selenium 2.0 web version because a lot of people are moving to from manual testing towards automation. So it becomes difficult for person moving from manual towards automation and start doing extensive coding with Java or with other languages supported by Selenium. So in order to ease out their automation process, Selenium ID is given or is still available in this particular version called 2.0 web. Now moving forward, we'll see about RC, the remote control. Now as we have seen that is basically it's a complementary tool uh, available with Selenium ID. 
Now, one of the major aspects of putting RC in 1.0 web version was to run the scripts made in ID over other browsers apart from Firefox. So that is why RC came into the picture. So RC was able to play back the scripts made in ID in other browsers apart from Firefox. For example, I want to run the scripts in Chrome browser. I want to run the scripts in IE browser. I need to use RC for that. The same script needs to be or can be rather used in RC, but I will use RC for the purpose of just running the same script over other browsers. So we'll see about that later point of time. Now, what is RC as a whole? It's basically an API by itself. It's a server based API. So we need to download this particular API from the Selenium website and configure our systems with it. Next thing about how do we run the Selenium IDE scripts in Selenium RC? So there's a feature available in Selenium IDE called an import feature. This import feature present in Selenium IDE is actually required to convert the Selenium ID based scripts to Java based codes or to PHP based codes or to JavaScript based codes or to Python based codes. So after conversion of the Selenium ID based scripts to Java to Java codes or to JavaScript codes, okay, we can run these converted codes through Selenium RC. So that is why this particular point is given that can run converted Selenium scripts of Selenium IDE. So we can use Selenium RC to learn or rather to run the converted Selenium scripts made in IDE. Now please understand one particular thing. Selenium IDE creates scripts using Selenium commands. So if you want to run those scripts in Selenium RC, we have to first convert it. So we have to use the import feature present in Selenium ID. This import feature will convert the Selenium based commands into a Java code or to a JavaScript code or to a Python code. After conversion, we can run it in Selenium RC. The third point says about create independent test scripts. So not only we can use Selenium RC for the purpose of running Selenium ID scripts, we can also create independent test scripts using Selenium RC. That's what you mean by creating independent test scripts. Let's look at the next point. It says that we can run same test scripts over different browsers. That means we can use Selenium RC for the purpose of conducting cross browser testing. Now I can basically create a single script. The same script can run in Firefox. The same script can run in Chrome or IE or Safari. So this is nothing but checking the functionality of the application over different browsers and that's nothing but your cross browser testing so that is why this point is given that we can run the same test scripts over different browsers and this that's precisely your cross browser testing that we can do using selenium rc moving ahead to the next point we'll see some drawbacks of rc and these drawbacks are important for us to understand because then we'll be able to know why Selenium 2.0 web version was released. So let's say the first the couple of drawbacks out here. The first drawback is a weak API. Now what do you mean by a weak API? It precisely means that the number of classes and methods and interfaces present in Selenium RC was less. So if you have less number of classes or methods or interfaces in an API, the coding structure becomes complex and we have to write down a lot of codes and that's not a good sign because people who are actually coming from the manual testing background or people who are doing automation for the first time using selenium tool they find it difficult to use selenium rc and that is why it was considered as a weak api the next drawback is your the test suit management now we can we will be able to actually control a considerable amount of test suits and manage this, those test suits with selenium rc but if the number of test suits increase to a huge level then management of the test suit becomes difficult now management of the test suit means what test suits might be dependent or independent of each other Inside test suits, we have test cases which might be dependent or independent. How do we prioritize our test case? How do we 
make our test cases dependent on each other. So th these dependency and prioritization of test cases can be managed using Selenium RC, but not to a greater level. So if the number of test suits increases to a very huge level, then management of it becomes difficult. And that is why this particular point is given as test suit management becomes problematic. The next drawback is the starting of the RC server. Now, in order to use RC, the first thing that we need is to start the RC server. If the RC server does not start, we will not be further able to use the RC as a whole, the RC API as a whole. So the first thing that we need to do in order to use the Selenium RC server was to start the RC server. And how do we start the RC server? We have to start the RC server by firing commands through the command line prompt. And what happens is most of the time, the RC server misfired. That means most of the time, the RC server did not use to start. And this was one of the major, major pain areas of using Selenium RC for companies who were doing automation with RC. The next drawback of Selenium is it uses the command line prompt. So if you want to use RC, you got to use the command line prompt. Starting from your RC server. So if you need to start the RC server, we need to use the command line prompt in order to start and stop it. Similarly, let's say I have created a single script. I want to run this particular script over other browsers. Let's say Chrome, IE or Mozilla. There are separate RC server commands to run the same script over other browsers. That means I need to fire separate commands in order to run the same script over different browsers. And that's a pain again. Nobody would like to use command line prompt in order to fire commands. And if there are exclusive commands for firing the same script over other browsers or testing the same script over other browsers, nobody is interested in that. So that is why this particular point is given as a drawback uses command line prompt. So need to fire separate commands to run the same scripts in different browsers. The last point as I want to reiterate is the fact is the creation of reports. Now the generation of reports is a very important affair or a process or a step as far as testing process is concerned. We need reports which are technical reports, which are, which are technical reports pertaining to automation. We need reports pertaining to your managerial part. Managerial reports are generally macro level reports, which are jazzy kind of reports with lot of, you know, uh, pie charts and histograms. And technical reports are technically very uh, viable and at the uh, are, and are defined at the very micro level. Report generation was not up, up to the mark with using Selenium RC. It used to create reports, but not liked by technical guys. And there were no reports generated actually for managers. So that is why these are considered as drawbacks of RC. And because of these drawbacks, you know, the usage of RC in the market started diminishing. And which created a lot of, you know, uh, problems and a lot of, lot of headache for the guys who had made this particular tool. And the guys who had made this particular tool were people from ThoughtWorks. So that's precisely your drawbacks of your Selenium RC.